Hey there, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Greg. Today I'm gonna to show you how I made this fatty, juicy, smoky, and dewy sausage. Let's get on to it. What I'm using today is a pork butt. This one has a pretty decent fat cap on it. And uh, I bought this bone in because it's a little cheaper that way. Once I'm done, I'll save the bone. I'll throw it into a stock sometime later. Anyway, I'm just going to cut this into cubes that are going to fit into my grinder. And then I'm going to put that in my freezer to let it firm up a little bit before I grind it. I'm also going to be using a little bit of pork belly for my andouille. Going about two thirds pork butt and one third pork belly. It's definitely going to up the fat content of my finished sausage, but that's okay. Andouille is not really a sausage you usually eat on its own. It's usually used in meals. So having a little extra fat, not going to be a problem for me. Now I've got two options here. One is to just cut this into small cubes. And the other is to cut it into pieces that'll fit in my grinder and use what I call the kidney bean plate, which is an extremely coarse grind. Because what I want to do in the end is to stud the sausage with little pieces of fat and the pork belly meat. Anyway, once I got this cut up into pieces for my grinder, I'm going to put it in the freezer also and let it firm up too. I've had my meat chilling. It's down to like 31 degrees. This is my pork butt. I'm going to run most of this through my 10 millimeter grinding plate. And I'm going to leave the fattier pieces to run through with my pork belly. I've had this part of my grinder in the freezer so that it's nice and frosty cold as well. And that will give me the best grind. I'm just feeding this through as the grinder will take it. I'm not forcing anything through. I'm not using my plunger at all. Now I'm going to run my pork belly and the fattier parts of the pork butt through this crazy big die. My meat is still 32 degrees, just under, right around 32. Plenty cold. Want it to at least be below 35 for mixing. Keeping sausage cold every step of the way, very important. This is one of the reasons I'm using these cotton liners underneath my gloves, because I don't want my hands to warm up this fat. And the other thing is my hands are going to hurt if I try to mix this 32 degree meat without these liners. So I'm going to keep this andouille very simple. Gonna add salt, because this will be cold smoked outside of the food safety guidelines. It's gonna need this cure number one, because I'm not a big fan of botulism. Keeping my flavors very simple here. Gonna add some black pepper. I'm gonna add some cayenne. And I'm gonna add some thyme. I'm also gonna add some fresh minced garlic. Now, some people will also use mace or nutmeg, some allspice maybe, maybe some cloves, but I'm keeping mine very basic. To help loosen this batter up, I'm also going to add just a little bit of ice water. Now I'm just going to dig in and mix, and I definitely could use a slightly bigger lug than what I'm using, but I don't. this is what I have, and this is about as big of a batch of sausage as I ever make, so we're going to make it work here. If you're doing a small amount, you could definitely do this in a stand mixer. The reason I'd ground the fat bigger is I'm hoping to get big chunks that are sort of suspended in the matrix of the meat. That's the finished look I'm going for, and texture, and give a texture to it as well. So I find mixing sausage, it's kind of a matter of like flipping it and kneading it, squeezing it just till it all comes together into one sticky homogenous mass. I'm trying to coax some of the uh, protein out. That's why they call it protein extraction, because we are trying to literally extract the myosin and actin, and that's what reaches out and makes it sticky. Now, andouille is a very heavily spiced, may not have many spices, but it's got a lot of what's in there. Should be pretty spicy. It's going to be really smoky. 
it's not really a sausage you usually eat on its own. It's more something that goes into things to add flavor. This is why we want it so smoky and so flavorful. All right, now we're starting to really lift up the pan. Starting to really want to pull my gloves off. Sticking to my hand really well. Not falling off. I can't really shake it off. And if you look close up, you can really see some strands reaching out. It's looking a little fuzzy. So I'm going to call this done. Start stuffing. Ready to load my stuffer. As I put handfuls in, just going to try to push out any air that's in there. This is a big batch. I'm going to have to do it in a few different stuffer loads because all I have is this smaller five pound stuffer. Just set this aside in the fridge while I stuff this. Be right back. First thing I'm going to do here is push the meat out to the end of my horn, on the right, and then take my casings. I'm using, I'm using big ones. I'm using the 4042s because, you know, this andouille is something you cook with. So it doesn't need to be small like a bun size or anything. But I like to open it up, get a little bit of water in there. That's just going to help it slide over this a little easier. And then we're just going to load it up. Had these soaking overnight, and you just want to make sure it slides nice and easy. I got a little tiny piece left over from the last time I used these casings, so I'm going to load that up first. Otherwise, they end up with lots of little pieces at the end, so I just like to use up the small piece first. Tie a little knot at the end, put a couple holes in there just to let any air out. And then I'm just going to fill it up. Now, I don't want to go too tight because you don't want to burst them when we link them. You don't really want to go too loose, although if it is loose, you just twist it more when you link it. One way to tell is to just pinch it. If it stays like that, you're probably good. If it springs back or doesn't want to pinch down like that, you may have gone a little too full. And then I'm just going to give them a few twists. This is just a few. I'm going to bring this one towards me. Come down to the next one. Twist that one away from me. And then this last one. Just give it a few twists towards me. The last one's always a little loose because of that knot. Make sure this still slides good. If it doesn't, lube it up a little more. If it's not sliding good, you got to lube it. If you haven't figured that out in life, I don't really know what to tell you. So there's really no right or wrong size to make these. I like to just think of like how much is going to go into a gumbo or a jambalaya or whatever I might be cooking. Generally make my uh, andouille sticks a little bigger than I would make a sausage that I'm going to stick into a bun. Before I move these out of the way, I'm going to give them a few pricks anywhere I see an air pocket. Okay, now I'm going to move them out of the way out of the way load this up keep on stuffing see you in a minute now that they're all stuffed got them on a tray on a rack so there's airflow underneath gonna leave these in the refrigerator overnight let that cure start doing its thing which actually it will keep doing in the cold smoker because it's not cooking but uh but i do want these casings to dry up a little bit before putting it in there so into the refrigerator for a while catch you in a bit well, i've got my andouille Hang in. I'm going to give it a cold smoke. I'm trying out this smoke tube. Usually use the uh, smoke in it smoke generator, but giving this tube a try. See how long it lasts. And I'm going to give it a nice cold smoke before I cook it. Thought I had more chips than I do, but I'm using hickory because it's the only ones I could find around here. But I think it'll be good. It's a good strong smoke flavor, which is kind of what I'm going for. I'll check back in a while. Yeah, still haven't fixed the old smoke canyon. But got it going here. Small fire, just a little bit of charcoal, a couple sticks of using alder. I'm gonna use alder and maple. Cause that's my local wood that I got. He's got some color on him during the cold smoke, but this long, slow, warm smoke's really gonna uh Get some more color on them. So anyway, got one probe hanging for my air. 
because my thermometer is broken. And I got one probe stuck into this sausage here for my internal temperature. So one really cool feature of this ThermPro thermometer I'm using is I can keep track of my temperatures from my cell phone. For the first two hours of smoking, I'm going to try to keep my temperatures between 100 and 120 degrees. For the next two hours, I'll go between 120 and 140 degrees. And for the next two hours, I'll try to keep my temperatures between 140 and 160 degrees. After that, I'll bump the smoker up to about 180 until I reach an internal temperature of 150 degrees. It's been seven and a half hours, and these have reached 150 internal. What I'm going to do now is they're going to go into a cold water bath. That's going to stop their cooking right away. Tighten up those casings so they're nice and snappy. Yeah, this container is barely big enough, but it's doing the job. Once these cool down to about 100 degrees, I'll take them out, put them on a rack, or actually I'll hang them up because I can, but putting them on a rack works great too. And I'll just let them dry leave them out for a couple hours to continue to bloom and that'll just it really just affects their color but i do want them to dry off before i put them away so i'll just let them air dry and this will only take about five or ten minutes here in this water bath i've had these blooming here for about an hour and a half i think i'm going to take them down package them up leave a few out to make some gumbo some jambalaya a couple of other things an hour and a half looks good to me they're dried up pretty well. Probably cook that little tiny one up just to taste. Well, time to give this andouille a try. Like I was saying earlier, andouille is really a sausage you usually use in things. It's not so much, oh, it's not so much one you usually eat on its own, but let's give it a taste. Hmm. Got a really good snap to it. Very smoky. Pretty good amount of heat. I think given that it's supposed to be in things, I could have maybe even added more cayenne, but just by itself, it's pretty hot. Mmm. I can see this will definitely add a smoke flavor to anything that it's put into, like a gumbo, jambalaya, anything like that. I'm liking that studded effect of the fat, and it's definitely rendered out. It's not chewy or anything. Let's take a look at the cross section. See what it looks like. Oh yeah, liking that cross section look. Plenty of juice, you can see the uh, casings adhered really well. I really like the studded effect of that fat in there. I was a little worried that it might not render, but definitely rendered. This is gonna make a great gumbo. Stay tuned, I just might have a gumbo video coming up. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything, and whatever you do, put some love into your food. Peace.